Hi everyone, welcome to this blog post. This is a, a fun one. What I really like to do is build out processes, uh, including the yeah, Intex workflow and Intex forms, that really are made not just to make things easier, but can actually save a company money. Now, it is the 8th of July right now, and the WBC, the Worldwide Partner Conference of 2015, is actually starting in a few days. One of the things that a lot of companies are doing, actually sending a whole bunch of people to the event, and not all of them are in Orlando. So some of them are flying in from all over the US, others all from other parts of the world. Now, the interesting thing about this is that some companies, especially some of the uh, some of the vendors and sponsors, actually have a lot of people who are going to these events. So if you think about this, there's a lot of people coming, and there's going to be a lot of people arriving at the same airport and having to take cabs or taxis to uh, the either the conference or to the hotels. So what I was thinking is that what if I can keep a list of all the events, keep a list of everyone who's going to those events and when their arrival times are, and see if we can somehow improve the the wait time or just getting all those people to uh, the destination and save money for the company. So what I've done here is actually created a list here called events. So you can see we've got WPC15 and we can have as many events as we want here. We also have another list called arrivals. These are all the people who are going to particular uh, events. In this case, we, because this is uh, just dealing with WPC15, there's the event, these are all the employee names, and of course these would most likely be people or group fields and things like that. And then they have an arrival time, which is when they arrive at the appropriate airport. Now, once uh, all these people are in, what I've done is actually create a site workflow that I could manually run. And here's the workflow. Now I'll go through a little bit of it. I'm not gonna go through every single detail, but you can see there's roughly about, I'd say 30 or so actions in here. Now, what I'm going to do is actually go to site contents and go to site workflows, and then you'll see something like this, right? So there's my start a new workflow. Here is it's called organize arrival shared transportation, because what I want to do is see how many people are actually arriving at the same airport. And I want to go through and see if I can group those people uh, in such a way that they can share the transportation to uh, the hotel or to the uh, conference center. Now, of course, if this if you're going with a shuttle, then it probably doesn't make any sense to use this. But if you're talking about taking taxis, cabs, Uber, etc., this could potentially save a lot of money. So let's click on this. And what you'll see is it's not just a start button, but there's actually an in-text form. There's an initiation form for this particular workflow. So I'm going to select my event. Let's say the average price is $100. Uh, and the maximum group size is the maximum number of people that I would want to fit into a taxi. So the way I think about it, one driver, uh, one passenger in the front and two passengers in the back. Right? So three passengers, that's roomy enough and enough room for luggage and things like that. And then the other thing to consider is the maximum wait time. So if you arrive at an airport at say 9 a.m., you don't want to sit there and wait for somebody who's arriving at 6 p.m. just so you can save some money on a on a cab. So I'm going to say maximum wait time is going to be 60 minutes. So now I click on start and that will kick off this workflow. Now it's a fairly quick workflow because it's doing a few calculations and things like that, but there's no delays or anything in this workflow. Once this uh, workflow runs, I can actually go and look at the workflow history and get an idea of the results of this workflow. So now the workflow is done. There it is there. And here you can see it's a summary of the information you put in. There are 20 people arriving, $100 for the average cab price, three people per cab and maximum wait time of 60 minutes. And you look down here, you'll see groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 groups. So now instead of uh, spending $2,000, if everybody was to take a cab by themselves, now, you're spending $1,100 and you have a total savings of $900, which is quite a lot of money when it comes to you know, sending people to an event and potentially uh, using that money for you know, 
dinner, uh, entertainment, etc. So let's go and try another one. Again, we'll try the workflow. And when it brings up the form, we'll put in some different values. So we'll select WPC again, still $100. But let's say our employees are really patient and this time we're actually gonna uh, wait, let's say two and a half hours, right? 150 minutes is enough. They can uh, relax, maybe have lunch or something like that and wait at the, at the airport. So now let's click on start and see what we get now. Again, workflow is running, should be fairly quick. Uh, this is running on a VM, so it's not super fast. Now the workflow has run and let's have a look at this. Again, the summary information. We now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, groups instead of 11 or instead of 20 individual rides. And again, the total price would have been 200, but now the group price is $800 and you're saving $1,200 on transportation. Now, what I wanna do is run it one more time and I want to just try some different values. Again, we'll do WPC, but let's say it's only $50 a cab ride. And let's say we somehow fit four people in a cab. Click on start. So again, now what we're doing is we're having more people in the cab, but the price is less per ride. So there should be a big, big sort of saving there, but we'll see. And then once this runs, let's have a look at the, the history again. Again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten groups. We have hundred dollars, a thousand dollars for total, saving five hundred dollars right there. So you can see really easy to use this sort of process to to save the company a lot of money. Now, how does this workflow work? So let's have a look at the workflow itself. First of all, I'm actually going to jump into the workflow settings and show you that initiation form. Now, in the workflow settings, if you click on the drop down for edit start form and you click on edit with Nintex forms, this will bring up the form designer and you can see it's the initiate or initialization workflow, workflow form. Now, there's some interesting things I've done here. I haven't really worried, <laughs> excuse me, I haven't really worried about the UI as much because I just wanted to get the information and get that out there. But the interesting thing here is average cab price. Now this is just a single line of text as are these two as well. But if I open this up, you'll actually see there's a connected to property. And the connected to uh, property is actually set not to a field because this is an initiation uh, start, work, start workflow form. It's actually connected to something called num cab price avg which is the average cab price this is actually a nintex workflow variable so what will happen is when users fill in this form all these oops right there all these are actually linked to nintex workflow variables so that you don't have to worry about storing these anywhere else store them directly into the workflow variable and then when the workflow starts after you submit this form it will have all that data and also, if I actually open this one up, I actually have also typed in a hard-coded default value. So in this case, we're dealing with the maximum wait time and the maximum wait time default value. I've just typed in uh, 60, which is 60 minutes. Okay, let's go to the actual workflow itself. So I'm going to just quickly go through this just to give you an idea of what it's doing. First of all, we're finding all the arrivals for the particular event getting the uh, employee name, the arrival date and time, and also the item ID because uh, from that arrivals list. We're also doing a, a count on how many arrivals we got from that query. Now we have a for each action, and the for each is actually going to iterate through each one of those arrivals, right? And that's basically what this part is doing here. Now I'm doing some other little bits of work here. I'm not going to go through a whole lot of this stuff. I am checking, I'm incrementing the, the group count because that's what I'm going to use in my calculation at the end to see how much money it's going to cost us to send all these different groups and how much money it's going to save the company. 
And then as we're iterating through each one of the arrivals, we then have to check whether the current group that we're dealing with. So what we have is we have a uh, each time through, we're going to have a group of people. And like we said, it's based on the data that you fill in that form. So we're going to have a maximum of three people. And we want to make sure that the person who is uh, at the, you know, the first person in the group, when they arrive, is not later than uh, 60 minutes of the last person that arrived. So each group, all the people in the, in the groups are going to be within a, arriving within a 60 minute period. So that's basically what this is doing. So they're saying, oops, if the if the group is empty, bear with me, this is jumping around all over the place. If the group is empty, we're going to store the current arrival date and we're going to add that user or that employee to our current group. If the group is not empty, then we want to uh, do a time difference. So we're going to calculate the current user's arrival compared to the first person in our group, right? Because the first person in our group is going to arrive probably before uh, the current person that we're looking at. And then finally, after doing this uh, calculation, we're checking to make sure, uh, well, let's change this to, is greater than maximum wait time in minutes. And then if it's, if it is, then we want to log the information to the workflow history and we want to clear out the group because now we're going to start with a new group. Otherwise, let's just add it to the group, right? We, we've matched all those conditions. So you can see not overly complex here. Now, when we come down to the bottom, this is where we do some of our calculations. So right here, this action set, we're doing calculation of the total individual cost. So in our case, we had 10 people or 20 people arrive on that particular day. And then we want to calculate, multiply that by the average cab price. And that gives us the total individual cost. We're doing the same thing, but now we're doing it for the groups. So if you have eight groups instead of 20 individual rides, we're going to do eight times the average cab price. And then we're doing a calculate savings calculations, which is the group cost minus the individual cost. And we're logging all this information. Now, there are a number of ways you could actually improve this workflow. I would actually prefer to break all this up into a state machine, have individual states uh, doing all these little bits of, of work. I'd also, rather than just logging information around a about a group, I would actually like to uh, store that information somewhere. Because what you could then do is actually automate the no a notification that goes out to everybody in a particular group to say, uh, John, Mary, Jeff, uh, you guys are in a group that it's going to share a cab to get from the airport to the hotel. Uh, John arrives at 8 a.m. Mary arrives a little bit later and Jeff arrives at 8.45. So hopefully within 45 minutes to an hour, you guys will be able to catch up at the airport and then go to the, to the cab area and catch a cab. And kind of automate that entire process. So not only do you want to do calculations and get all this information, <clears throat> but you also want to notify people of what group they're in so they can start reaching out to each other and uh, and getting all that organized. And you know, next part, you could also do things like Uber and all that sort of stuff. So really exciting what you can do with Nintex Workflow. And this is where I was getting at the very beginning, which is I like the idea of not only using Nintex Workflow and Nintex Forms for the, the common business processes uh, that you want to do to just improve your entire business, but also there are all these other little outlier uh, processes that you could actually build out. Now, no one's doing this necessarily manually, right? But it can still save you money because a lot of the time people are thinking about what am I doing manually now that I can use uh, a workflow for to automate. But this type of process is probably not done manually other than just individuals just reaching out to each other. So this could be a great workflow to uh, to automate this kind of process and group a whole bunch of people together, save the company a whole bunch of money. So I hope this is helpful. I'm going to uh, expose this particular workflow uh, and the lists in my blog post. So feel free to go down the bottom of the blog post to the download section and download them and hopefully they're handy. If you have any questions, please add some comments to it. Thank you very much.